Welcome ladies and gentlemen, it's the day of first reviews. We've just done the first review video for A Quiet Place Day 1, and now we're looking at Maxine. Hmm, this is the third movie in Ty West's X trilogy. Obviously it was X, then it was Pearl, now it's Maxine. I really like uh, this world, I really like these films, I really like Mia Goth's character as Maxine. I really, really, really love the trailer. I think it's absolutely incredible. It's got... It's just a beautifully crafted trailer. So the first reactions are here, first reviews are here online. And it's looking really good. And I can believe all of this. I can just believe it all. Genuinely. Because the other films have been that good. They have been really good films. So we're going to take a look at this today. Do hit subscribe. And please do turn the bell notifications on. I do these kind of like first review reaction videos to... You know, a bunch of movies which I'm personally looking forward to. Or films which are pretty major blockbusters and will be interesting to see whether there's a fan slash audience divide. Well, no, critic divide. Audience slash critic divide. But anyway, let's take a look, right? Uh, I mean, even just this alone, this is this is great. Like, just this alone, look. As you can see, just rocking it. Mia Goth rocking it at the premiere in LA. Uh, leaning on... Uh, uh, I don't even know what that is, to be fair. My Americana car knowledge is, is quite lacking. But just... She's got charisma. You know, she's got real, real good charisma. And it oozes on the screen. Uh, which I love. I love that. I think that's great. Like, seldom do we have movie stars anymore. I think she's a movie star. Uh, which she says here. You know, Maxine is an effing movie star. Ty West directs another sexy killer installment in the Slashers trilogy busting with 80s glam this film beautifully crafts and elevates the horror genre to new levels mia goth will leave you speechless a perfect end to a perfect cult classic great i'm down for it i'm absolutely down for it that's cool great like how can you hate any of that as a as a review so again there's some more stuff here there's not a whole lot like the reactions are sort of few and far between but here's the actual photo itself uh, i like how they did this as well sort of hollywood star you know on the side there um <laughs> hung out with a severed head at the after party for maxine how cool is that still like, look at this super cool anyway here's some more uh, Maxine is a wild throwback to mid-80s, L.A. scum and sleaze, captured with a satirical bite. Gutsy, gritty, and grisly, Mia Goth absolutely slays. Exceptional soundtrack, compelling cinematography, and immersive production design adds texture. Fun callbacks abound. Again, remember as we we're, as were sort of, you know, reading through some of these, there's nothing running through this as a trend. Right, there's nothing, they're, they're all different. There's no studio talking points, which means I can believe some of this stuff for sure. Um, but again, there's just so much of it. I mean, that was a, it was a massive cast. You can see it all here, huge cast, absolutely huge cast. There we go. Uh, Maxine is a De Palma-esque celebration of the nastiness of genre and pervy truths within the VHS static. A powerhouse reclamation of 80s horror tropes that shatters the Hollywood veneer, beautifully synthesizes the ideas present in X and Pearl, an all-time great horror trilogy. Excellent. So Maxine isn't your father's 80s slasher pastiche. Ty West has made one of the real L.A. sleaze freaks. Those of us who love the Psycho sequels, the works of Jack Shoulder, William Webb, Cat Shear and the like, Goth earns her final girl flowers once again. Bacon is delicious. Love it. Uh, and there's just some interviews here with Mia Goth. Uh, another one. Got to see Maxine last night and absolutely loved it. I love how each film in this series is different from each other. 80s horror is perfectly captured. Mia Goth gives maybe the best performance of her career. L.A., where it's set, is its own character. Kevin Bacon is awesome. I like that one. I like that one a lot because when a, a location... Like, I always say that when a location is a character or, or the soundtrack is a character, you know, the score, that's when you really beautifully crafted as a whole. A holistical whole. 
Max Eaton once again paints a singular style within Ty West trilogy, an entertaining horror conclusion pulsating with 1980s giallo spirit. Uh, Mia Goth kills it in this battle of fame versus infamy. My least favourite of the trilogy? Oh, interesting, but it ties up the story in a neat bloody bow. I'm surprised by that, but okay, interesting. Because you think that's actually really positive. Might be they, they just don't like the 80s style, I don't know. Maxine is perfectly postured as a grand exit for one of the best trilogies of the past decade. It is a very underrated trilogy, by the way. Like it's, well, I mean, obviously we don't know, we haven't seen this one, but it's an underrated set of movies thus far. Mia Goth is surrounded by a stacked ensemble cast that lifts her to greater heights than ever before, turning Maxine Minx into the Hollywood star she deserves to be. Uh, this film is oozing with sleazy, campy humour. I will say that there is sleaze has been yeah, repeated quite a lot now. Maybe that's a talking point. Uh, and drenched in stylized 80s flair. It's what we've come to expect from A24 and Ty West in all the best ways. Still, I'd say it's pretty positive. Bloody Halsey, singer, now a bloody, I don't know, movie star, whatever. Uh, Maxine is such an end to a brilliant, it's such a perfect end to a brilliant horror trilogy. Mia Goth is a true star. She is absolutely captivating in every scene she's in. Elizabeth Debicki gives an exquisitely strong performance, exceptional work by Ty West. God, it's out soon, actually, isn't it? July 5th, yeah, it really is out soon. No surprise here, but I love Maxine. This particularly fla this particular flavor of 80s pastiche is my all-time favorite. Ah, this pastiche. There is, uh, there's some talking points now. Uh, is my all-time favorite, and getting it in 2024 is a dream come true. It's not going to work for everyone, but by Sherman, Shear, and O'Neill, it works for me. The thing is, even though it might be a talking point, but the others have been really good. So this still, regardless of talking points or not, it still might be very positive. Um. Yeah, I don't know. First reviews, blah, blah, blah. Maxine is perfectly positive. Yeah, I mean, this is just what I've been discussing anyway. I don't know. I'm keen for this. I love what Ty West is doing with each iteration of the X trilogy. Maxine is a, is a blast from the 80s with a gritty film noir vibe and a different killer take from the previous films. All bets are off, even if it's, star even if it's a star-studded cast. Nice. I don't know, I'm keen. Again, bloody fabulous. Could almost smell the 80s in that film. Crazy follow-up to a smashing trilogy. Kevin Bacon stole the scenes like creepy AF. Uh, I kind of really want to see the Puritan franchise now. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. That's uh, something which they have in, um, yeah, in, the, uh, in the movie. Uh, yeah, look, I'm... Uh, hey, look, I'm interested. I think this is going to be good. What do you guys think? Uh, love to hear your thoughts. Genuinely love to hear your thoughts. I'm keen for this. I think this will be pretty decent. But we will see. Again, need a spin-off trilogy with Kevin Bacon's PI character as soon as possible. Thoughts down below. Maxine. First reviews. Pretty positive. Pretty damn positive. Drop your thoughts there. Hit subscribe if you're newer, guys. Turn the bell notifications on. Cheers. Take care. Bye-bye now.